Hi, so here we are with an introduction to transport in section 17. So, in the past few weeks, we've done a lot of work. Uh, it was at first focused on materials. Those were sections 2 through 14. And we learned that we can deal with bulk material parameters that are known. Uh, we introduced something called a density of states, an occupation factor. And then we let that be followed by an introduction to non-equilibrium, where we discussed um, um, a concept of detailed balance and non-equilibrium itself. And then we discussed uh, how to return to equilibrium via recombination and scattering processes. So that was a key element. Now we're really getting ready to do some transport. Uh, we'll start with a drift current, and uh, then we'll deal with something called mobility and we'll introduce that and um, deal with carrier concentrations from something called a Hall effect. And finally, we conclude the section with the physics of diffusion and derive the Einstein relationship. So, all of that being said, now let's really focus on transport. There's a couple of governing equations for all of this. First, you can start out with a, what's called Poisson equation in our world of device transport but you might have seen this also as Gauss's law, where the gradient of the displacement field is uh, the sum of all the charges that are in a system. So the gradient of the displacement is equal to the charges in the inside um, its surface. Now, there's uh, two equations for the uh, electron uh, uh, flow. And we first we look at uh, dn dt, which is the gradient or the change, spatial change of the electron flow, and uh, minus a recombination where the electron number uh, is reduced, or maybe there's carriers generated. So there's two components here, two components here, and if the current changes in space x, and this is j of x um, uh, as a function of x. If the, uh, if the current changes spatially, that's this term here, that means there must be a change in electron density as well. All right, that's a continuity equation, if you will. And here is now the drift and diffusion uh, expression where this is a drift term, where this uh, key element here is the electric field that is driving electrons typically from an external applied voltage. It could be built-in electric fields as well that create a certain balance. And there's a diffusion term that is here. And the same holds true for holds uh, as well. So we have really five equations that we're going to deal with. And in this segment here, we're going to deal with the uh, term here that I already circled in red, the drift term. All right. So let's uh, remember roughly uh, the meaning of an effective mass of this particle that is in, inside the semiconductor. Sometimes it's often called a quasi-particle because it's experiencing a crystal potential, this U crystal. And then we apply an external potential uh, due to biases, etc., or other imbalances, and we just think of this uh, um, electron in the crystal potential as a quasi a, a particle as an electron that has now an effective mass. There's an uh, electron effective mass and a whole effective mass. We've done all these concepts, right? And within that, we can calculate, we calculated Schrodinger equation and did other calculations on quantum mechanics for particle in a box, etc., right? Now we're going to do the same concept where we're looking at the electron flow in a system now where we have drift by an electric field, and we have these electron states, and there is an imbalance due to the electric field, and the electrons effectively flow down the ramp of the conduction band, and that conduction band is made up of multiple band structures that are uh, locally aligned with some electric field. And we introduced this concept of just forgetting about these EK diagrams altogether, and lumping all the charges as a delta function uh, at the bottom of the conduction band. So those are resembling these x's. All right, so how would these electrons flow? And let's begin to do some classical mechanics on these particles. Think of them as particles. They have a velocity, 
they are part of an electric field, and we're looking at the forces on this particle. So what you have here is dP dt, which is of course the force on this particle. Okay, so the electron by its charge is dragged um, in the other direction of the electric field, and we have a loss term, a decay term, where the electron uh, velocity is damped. So this is a damping term, and we have this here with a minority carrier lifetime. All right, so that's a classical expression, and we can solve this differential equation, of course. There's not much um, glory in, solving, in, in, in doing this. It's pretty simple. And the expression has, of course, a complex exponential in it with a certain rise time. And that rise time has to be, of course, related to the decay of the system. Since if you did not have this relaxation term, you would not have this complex exponential and the velocity would just increase indefinitely. So this uh, relaxation really dampens the electron flow and lets it uh, come to a maximum. So that's the, the chart seen here. So the electron velocity increases in time, and then it saturates. And this is due to the friction in the system, or the relaxation in the system. Okay, so here's again this exponential, and we can... Uh, say that at infinity, time of infinity, you will have reached some terminal velocity. That is, the, that the electron can reach. And again, that is related to the uh, relaxation time tau. Now, infinity here means one to two picoseconds. So that tells you how fast these electronic and relaxation processes in a semiconductor are. This is incredibly fast. You don't have to wait a minute for an electron to reach its uh, terminal velocity, uh, but it is in happening incredibly fast. And you have to have really strong experimental expertise and setups, etc., to actually resolve these uh, really short-term uh, temporal responses. And there's a whole field of science that is dealing with such uh, ultra-fast optics and the effects on electron carriers, this whole conference series that talk about hot carrier electrons, etc. All right, so at the end, you end up with a mobility that you lump together with the electric field. Okay, so that is how uh, the, the uh, drift field really comes to be. So you say that you do have a mobility term that is really depending on the relaxation of the carriers, and of course, current is charge times velocity. Here's the charge uh, in elemental charge, here's the electron density, and here's the velocity, right? Here we go. This is the drift equation, and we'll be solving this quite a bit in, the, in this course. And as I mentioned, this theory is valid once you've reached um, the relaxation uh, time um, of one to two picoseconds. Um, so for, for different um, uh, uh, configured systems, for different taus, you will have different uh, terminal velocities. All right, good. So this is the introduction to the drift current. In the next segment, we'll talk about mobility and, um, uh, and how mobility is assembled into, from different components. So I'll see you in that section.